Good morning. It is July 12th as we gather for worship. I welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we are gathered here as the congregation of Swissvale Presbyterian Church. I don't really have any announcements today. Um, I may put some in the email. Um, if you have something that you would like to share with the church, feel free to call me with it. Feel free to email me with it um, so that we can uh, get that news out to everyone. Would you join me this morning in the call to worship? Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Your word is our heritage forever, the joy of our hearts. Light up the path before us and write your word on our hearts. For we carry the name of Jesus and want to walk in the light of his love. Amen. Our first hymn this morning would you join me as we sing together, Open My Eyes, that's number 381. of people just like us. Men who grieve, women who question, siblings who don't get along, parents who choose favorites. God's word of grace is meant for people just like us. There is no need for pretense in this place, in this space. We are all broken people. Let us go to God in prayer. Creator God, you made this world, the mountains that rise tall, the oceans that carve depths, the winds and the waves. You made everything that lives and moves, and you made us. In times of uncertainty, O oh God, we confess our fears. We confess our worries. We confess our frailty. 
We confess that our faith has been shaken at times. We call upon you, great creator, to work in us, to restore and renew our faith through your love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Console us. Help us to deepen our trust in you by our faithfulness in love to each other. Remind us of the call to love our neighbors as ourselves. And through that love, may we find your love is with us all along. Amen. Hear the good news as it's found in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. Now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The Spirit of God dwells within you. If you hear nothing else today, hear this. There is no condemnation. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. Let's give God praise and thanks for that this morning. Amen. As we draw close to the word of God, would you join me in the prayer for illumination? God of our hearts, open our eyes and our ears before you open our mouths. Help us to receive your word so that we are equipped with your love, your peace, and your will before we are sent out into the world. As we tarry here, may your spirit strengthen us and give us boldness of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture this morning is from uh, the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55, beginning at verse 10. As for the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, and it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead, the, instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. We spent some time in the church yesterday, um, kind of measuring out some pews, figuring out things were, where things were, and I realized it's been a long time since I've seen that window of the sower. So listen now to God's gospel for you, God's good news as I read from Matthew chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. So they were outdoors for worship that day. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. 
Then the disciples came and asked him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it. Longed to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the words of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what is sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word but cares for the world, and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, and indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We've been doing a lot of gardening. Instead of going places as a family, instead of uh, doing visiting, we've been digging in the dirt. We've been planning on doing this ever since we moved in. I've always wanted a lot of a lot of flower beds that are just brimming with perennials so that they have a chance to spread out and expand and so I won't have to replant them every year. So I've been reading an awful lot about perennial gardens and I've been learning that if you're a gardener that likes order and likes to maintain control you really have to be careful with your perennials because they exist to bear fruit. They exist to go to seed. They exist to spread themselves everywhere. So you have to be careful when they start to go to seed because that's one of the many ways that perennials work to be perennial is to form seeds, to spread around. And if you want to maintain order and control in your garden, you're going to have to be careful. You're going to have to deadhead those flowers uh, before they start to form their seed pods because if you wait too long, they're going to spread and expand to places you don't want to go. We got two uh, mint plants, and but they were called hyssop in the garden center. And so I got two of them, and then whenever I got home, my grandfather was a farmer, and so I learned growing up that mint has square stems. And whenever we started planting them, I said, these have square stems. And I pulled off a leaf, and I ground it in my fingers, and I thought, oh, this is mint. Mint will take over a garden. 
I'm going to have to watch these two plants because I want the other ones to have a chance to take over as well. It's all about getting them to take over in equal portions. The seeds of a mint plant or any other plant will try and leave your garden and go where they're not supposed to go. So if you want sort of a wild flower meadow look, that's fine. All you got to do is trim them back. So as I said, each of them have their own space where they can go crazy. But if you're a gardener that likes a lot of order and doesn't like to let things just do what they're going to do naturally, you're going to need to keep an eye on them when it comes time for things to go to seed. Or you're going to have an entire garden of just mint. So that's something that strikes me as odd about the sower that we read about this morning. The sower does not care for order in their garden. Maybe it's because there's only one kind of seed they're sowing. Maybe it's because they're sowing a field and not a couple of decorative flower beds. The sower is growing crops, not things for beauty. Although I have to say, during quarantine, one of the shows I've watched is this reality TV show from Canada about two couples who were paid to live a Western Canadian pioneer lifestyle for a whole year. And when they scattered their seed, they didn't reach into their seed bags and kind of throw it out like it's confetti. It was still a very kind of controlled motion after they had plowed. They wanted to make sure the seeds landed properly in the furrows that they had spent so much time and effort plowing because someone had to come out and teach them how to plow. Someone had to come out and teach them that sowing motion, and it's very precise. It's not really efficient. It's not really good for business to sow the way the sower does, to throw your seeds on the path, to throw your seeds in the shallow soil or the rocky soil, to sow your seeds and then not weed around them. But that's what God does. God wants the seeds of the gospel sown into every corner of the world, into every life situation. That's where God flings the seeds of the gospel. I looked up uh, the sermon I preached before when I preached on the sower, and it was all about soil prep, which we learned when we had our new garden beds dug last year is critical. And it's more than just dumping manure in your old dirt. There's science to it. And quite frankly, it's more expensive than you'd think <laughs> to prep your beds properly. But when your garden has been neglected and just left to sit for 30 years like ours had been, it's much needed. And it really does make all the difference because we had it done because we knew. Seeds were coming. Plants were coming. And we knew that just to pull out the old, our new wasn't going to succeed. So we needed to have all the soil prepped. And I preached the last time on the parable of the sower that God is responsible for that soil prep. Because God knows the seeds are coming. And God knows that the seeds are going to go everywhere. Because that's the way God's going to do it. They are not simply going to stay in the walls of the carefully prepped, carefully prepared garden. And that's the way God wants it. I asked a couple weeks ago for hymn requests. And I'm going to ask you to keep emailing those to me or, or when I call you to tell them to me or if you call me. Oh, I had hymn requests for you. That's perfect, I think. Keep those rolling in for me, please. But I will also tell you that I have learned, not just in my ministry with this congregation, but in, you know, since before seminary, that any time I ask for hymn requests, the first one out of everyone's mouth, yeah, you know it, 
it's going to be in the garden, right? So that came to me as no surprise this time as well, that that's the most requested, most beloved hymn, hands down, in the garden. You don't even have to tell me anymore. I'm just going to assume the first one on the list is in the garden. And then we have the rest of your hymn requests. If I took hymn requests every week, I am confident we'd sing it every week. The seed of In the Garden got spread around when it was made popular by the revival preacher Billy Sunday. And it's by far and away your favorite hymn. And you can tell me better uh, why you like it so much. And I hope you do share that with me. But I think that we like it so much because we like to think about time alone with Jesus. We like to think about Jesus making the time for us, spending the time for us in his busy ministry. This is not a story of Jesus far out in a boat and we're just one of the crowd. This is one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus. It's him making the time, taking the time for us, making us feel special. God accepting us, claiming us as his own. There's no one else in the garden but me and Jesus. Being able to listen to his actual words, not words that come to us third hand out of an ancient book and then get filtered through the brain of a pastor that maybe we don't always agree with all the time. His actual words, his actual voice, his very presence. We want to tarry there, to linger there, to dawdle there. But I learned this week that this hymn is not about us meeting Jesus. I started looking because the last line of the refrain has always bugged me. And the joy we share as we tarry there, no other has ever known. Now, a hymn's not scripture, it's poetry, I get that. And it reflects the author's feelings more than God's word sometimes. And that's okay if we know that going in, that a hymn is not scripture. But the idea that no one has ever known the joy of being with Jesus other than me, no one could feel this joy that I'm feeling. You have to admit, that's pretty darn self-centered and arrogant. Maybe it's in that moment that I can imagine that anyone, that maybe it's in that moment that I can't imagine that anyone has felt that joy. But no, because tr Christ trains us to think about others more than ourselves. So imagining the joy that others would feel when encountering Christ, that's actually a big part of our motivation to spread the gospel, to share Jesus, because we want others to know that joy. So I did some reading. I did some research, and I learned that the author, the composer of In the Garden, was imagining not his personal encounter with Jesus, but Mary Magdalene's in the Easter story in the Gospel of John. She goes to the garden alone when the dew is still on the roses, and Christ discloses himself. That means reveals himself, but not like popping out from behind the hedges. She thought him to be dead. That's the level at which the Son of God discloses himself. She thought he was gone forever. She's the first one Jesus appears to. She, she's the first one to learn that he's alive. She's the first one to experience that disclosure of the resurrection. The resurrection of her dear friend, her Savior, her God, the joy she has in that moment, no other has ever known. Who wouldn't want to stay forever in that garden, in that moment? 
Now, this is where the gospel story uh, really diverts from the song. In the hymn, Mary lingers all day and into the night. Night is falling. And Jesus lets her in the hymn. But in the gospel, he bids her go pretty much immediately. In the hymn, it almost sounds like Jesus reluctantly sends her out, that voice of woe. Jesus does not reluctantly send us out. It's our purpose to be sent out, to be flung into the world like confetti and spread around on all kinds of soil. That sower in the parable does not sow reluctantly. That sower in the parable does not hem and haw over the placement of each of those seeds, looking for just the right pH balance in the soil. That sower is not making sure each seed is carefully covered over. The sower does not fret and worry over each individual seed. The sower does not delay, does not tarry, staring lovingly at the seeds in his hand, taking in the full miracle that each one of those seeds is, the potential for life in each one. The sower is intent on getting them out there, flinging them across the land. Although we are each these precious little miracles full of life in the hand of God. So maybe it's okay that there's a touch of woe in Jesus' voice as he bids Mary Magdalene go. Because he knows what she's being sent into. A woman with no status in her society being asked to convince a, convince a bunch of men of the greatest miracle ever the greatest impossibility ever. That's some tough soil. She's a seed that he knows he's sending into potentially rocky or weedy or pest infested soil. He knows that some of her message is going to land on the path and doesn't stand a chance. So as he flings her out of the garden, maybe he does so with a touch of sadness. But nevertheless, he sends her out of the garden. In the gospel, in the hymn, he bids her go. We want to tarry with Jesus. We want to dawdle and linger and absorb the words of our loving caring Savior. We want to be told again and again that we are precious, that we are beautiful, beloved creations, that we matter, lovingly crafted by the hands of God. And we are all of those things, so much more than the lilies of the field or the sparrows of the air. But if we stop there, standing there absorbing all the love of God. We're annuals, not perennials. Absorbing all of that sunshine and water, all of that love and attention, just to last for one season of beauty. Not producing any seeds that try to go out of the garden. You know where annuals are going to stay, and you know they're not going to be back next year. We carry the beauty and the love of God within us. Not just as pretty flowers, but as seeds in our behaviors, in what motivates us. We are the seeds that God sows. And we can display that beauty like those annuals where we stand, where we sit, to our close families, to our close friends, basking in the presence of Jesus in that garden. Or we can become 
seeds. Seeds that are willing to go outside the garden and are going to try to leave the boundaries of the garden. A seed's entire purpose is to leave the flower, to leave the garden, to go as far as possible in order to spread the message of God's beauty and love. So let's tarry here with Jesus a moment longer as we sing our favorite hymn, as we pray our familiar prayer. And then let's willing, let's be willing to get scattered as much as safely possible these days. <laughs> but let's get scattered to be the seeds of God, to show care, God's care, for the entire world, wherever we get flung. And even if we get flung onto the rocky path, onto the shallow soil, maybe even if we get flung where weeds threaten to grow up and choke us, let's remember that in all things, we are still flung there by God. Would you join me for our hymn? In the garden is, let's see here. There it is. It's number 425 in the blue hymnal. As always, I'm going to include at least the words. Do you need the words? <laughs> I will include at least the words in the worship email and links to them uh, on the Facebook and the YouTube page. Let's join together and sing in the garden. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on.
let's come to God in prayer. God, we are so thankful for your love. We are so thankful for how you claim us, for how you declare that we are yours. We are so grateful to have the knowledge that the creator of the universe and the savior of the world love us. Help us to use that to give us strength. Help us to take that, that awesome love and that, that privilege of being loved by you and use it. Help us to use it, God. Help us to be willing to share it. Not just in talking to people about Jesus and, and talking to people about worship and talking to people about the love of God, but in how we treat people. May we treat people so that they would want to tarry with you the way we do. Help us to treat people so that they would want to tarry with us the way that we want to tarry with you. Help us to be loving, caring, individuals, bearers of your message, bearers of your, the seeds of your gospel out into the world. God, it is such a broken world. It is such a scary place right now. Help us with our own selfishness in the midst of it. Help us to be more like your son, Jesus. God, help us to genuinely care for others. God, we lift up those every week who are struggling with their health, who are hurting, who are grieving. God, they are the prayers of your people. Give them your ear. But then, God, open our ears so that we may hear what you have to say. Open our hearts to love those whom we are so frustrated with, whom we are having so much difficulty with. Open our hearts to be loving. God, may we take all of the love that you pour upon us and share it with the world. May we stick with it. May we have the strength, no matter where that message falls, to keep bearing your message, to not get cynical, to keep Christ in our hearts. God, be with those who we cannot see today. Be with those who we cannot hear from today. Be with those who are ailing and grieving and frustrated and scared. Help us all be more like Christ 
so that when we pray, your will be done. It is a little more done each day. We pray these things as we are about to be sent out from this garden, sent out from this time together. God, may your strength be with us as our tarrying comes to an end. We pray these things in the name of the one who sends us out, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who armed us and taught us with this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Children of God, friends in Christ, sow the gospel wherever you go. Don't judge the soil on which you stand because God brings forth fruit from all kinds of unexpected places. Be willing to be flung into all kinds of soil. Be willing to be let go. As you leave the garden, may God, whose forgiveness is boundless, Christ, whose charge to you is freedom, and the Spirit, which gives us both life and peace, Keep our minds and our hearts in grateful communion as we seek to spread the love of God. Amen.